Semifinals continue. USC and TCU, one of these teams will advance to face UCLA in the championship tomorrow. We welcome you, those of you watching us on ESPN News. UCLA has already clinched a spot in the championship duel, and now it's USC and TCU's turn. This will be the second time they've, meet, meet, they've met this season, Drea. So these two teams know each other. Yeah, Courtney, these two teams definitely know each other, and that meet was in Miami, and USC lost one to four. But there was a little caveat. They were without their superstar from the ones, Megan Kraft. She was playing internationally. She is arguably the best player in the nation. The entire lineup was mixed up, so head coach Dane Blanton said that his team is eager to rematch against TCU. Yes, Drea, May Kraft out of the lineup shifts everybody down one, so there were completely new pairings. And even for TCU, the pairings were different. So it's a whole new opportunity to face one another with these pairs. Nothing like a rematch with everything on the line. We're starting at the ones. All five courts are in action right now. Tanya Moreno rolls that shot down the net tape. Delaney Maple there almost comes up with it. It rolled along and away from Maple. comes Tanya Moreno. Delaney Maple trying to dig it, she does. And she'll get the swing over. McCraft pulling a Moreno. And Tanya Moreno with the kill. Early in that rally, Daniela Alvarez, number one for TCU, took off full sprint to stay in that rally and keep it alive. And TCU finally able to score that point. Very experienced pair here for TCU. Daniela Alvarez and Tanya Moreno, both from Spain. They play together internationally. Down the line goes Delaney Maple. USC in system, spreading the offense out to the antenna. Delaney Maple so good at using the entire court offensively. Both of these teams have already played today. USC defeated LMU in their quarterfinal, and TCU was able to take down Stanford to get here to the semifinal duel. Moreno through the block of Megan Kraft. Tanya Moreno, she elevates and goes high seam in the left hand of Maycraft on the block. Maycraft setting behind her to set up Maple for a great shot. TCU serving the ball extremely easy to USC, and that's not going to work to beat Delaney Maple and Maycraft. You need to attack from the service line and hope you get them out of system. Yeah, serving aggressive has been so important. Can't make anything easy on anyone else, especially at this stage of the tournament. Right, Kraft going up with the poke shot. It's going to work. Want to let you know, if you want to continue watching the Beach Volleyball Championships, flip over to ESPN News. We will be there starting at 5 Eastern. For those of you staying on ESPN2, you will see the Men's Volleyball Indoor Championship, UCLA and Hawaii. But if you would like to keep watching beach volleyball, make sure you're tuning to ESPN News. Daniela Alvarez going up and giving it just enough oomph to get over the net. Delaney Maple, aggressive serve, almost gets TCU in trouble, but the big lefty, Daniela Alvarez, able to option for the kill. Alvarez, a year older than Tanya Moreno. She came to TCU first, scoped it out for the pair, said, Tanya, come on, it's great. We love playing for Hector Gutierrez. They have been so successful. Back-to-back -back conference pair of the year awards. And they're able to train. They are trying to qualify for the 2024 Olympic Games, and they're able to go to school and train full-time together. Started playing together back in 2017. 
Meg Kraft all over that. Great handwork by Meg Kraft to shut that down, and that includes the eye work. Watching her attacker, she signals that she's going to make a big move into the angle, and she does. Meg Kraft also trying to make the Olympics. Some heat coming off the arm of Tanya Moreno, sends it into the stands. Aggressive swing there. Yes, May Kraft for USC plays with Emily Stockman, trying to represent the U.S. in 2024 in Paris. Playing to 21, you have to win by two. Mabel can do that too. Such a smart beach volleyball player. I mean, she is bouncing balls in front of the defender, and it looked like Daniela Alvarez was signaling that she was going to take ball. That basically means she's going to line up on the ball and read it and try and make a move, and Mabel just crushed it. Hard to read that. Coming really fast at you. And Moreno puts it right where Delaney Mabel had just left. USC keeping the ball on Moreno. Midcraft makes a big block move into the angle, and Moreno recognizes that and redirects it over her. I like, I like. Midcraft, pretty hand set, and then you hear the call high line, and Maple puts it where they're not. No coach on this court, so there's no slow walk and talk for the USC pair, but this is an experienced pair who played together a long time. Very smart, know the game, and are doing just fine. I want to remind you, if you want to continue watching beach volleyball, make sure you're watching on ESPN News. If you're on ESPN2, you will see the men's indoor national championship between UCLA and Hawaii. We are switching over at the top of the hour here in about a minute. This beach volleyball semifinal continuing on. Alvarez and Moreno down a point with the serve. Moreno back to serve. If you're watching on ESPN2, we've got the men's indoor national championship for you, UCLA and Hawaii. For those of you sticking with us here on ESPN News, the semifinal continues. The winner will move on to face UCLA in the championship duel tomorrow. USC has won the last two national championships. TCU able to score a point off of a tough serve, but there Maple handles it. Courtney Lyle, Holly McPeak, and Andrea Carter with you for the semifinals. We've talked so much about this pair of Metcraft, Delaney Maple, how skilled they are. What makes them work so well together? Well, chemistry. They've grown up playing with one another. They know exactly where each other wants the ball. And they love to talk strategy. They push each other every day in practice for moments like this. First team All-Americans, they're the Pac-12 pair of the year. Yeah, Dane Blanton, their head coach, told us that this is a dream pair. They both won state championships together on the indoor side. They're very coachable and they're dedicated to getting better and better. Yeah, they push themselves at practice. That's why they're the dream team for Dane Blanton. They're leading this program as they rebuild. setting up like Maple behind her. Alvarez looking to cut it a little bit too far. I think it's a similar role for the TCU pair. I mean, they trusted Gucci, uh, Hector Gutierrez to come over to TCU as he's built this Horn Frog beach volleyball program. Very much so. And Daniela Alvarez, the dominant blocker, and Tanya Moreno, the quick, dynamic defender. They complement each other really well, and they get to train together full time now. All four players on this court, first team All-Americans this year. A swing by Tanya Moreno, and TCU takes an 11 to 10 advantage in the first set. We've reached the technical timeout at the ones. They'll take a seat. We'll step aside here in our semifinal. Well, the NCAA Beach Volleyball Championship coverage continues tomorrow on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Beach Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships.
Our championship duel will be tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN. First time that the top four seeds have all reached the semifinals. We're watching TCU here. It's their first semifinal appearance. And USC, they're very familiar with this stage of the tournament. Sixth semifinal in seven tournaments for the USC women of Troy. We've already seen UCLA advance. Interesting note, too, there's only been two teams in the NCAA era to win a national title. That'd be UCLA and USC. Yeah, will it be different this year? TCU might have something to say about that. Set one in action on all five courts and all five courts streaming live on the ESPN app. We want to take a look at the threes. Audrey Norse and Nicole Norse, the twins facing Haley Hamlet and Sutton McTavish. That's Audrey Norse serving. Number 24 in black. In comes McTavish. And she's going to get by Audrey, or excuse me, Nicole at the net. Nicole Norse was making a three block move, which means jumping into the line, but you got to be really disciplined with your press. And that ball came down on USC's side. This pair for TCU, a nine and one record. They started playing together two weeks ago, and that's always a challenge. You have to learn each other's tendencies, how you like to communicate. You've got to do that pretty quickly, but they had played a little together last year. That's going to be a point for USC. This pair for TCU had a great win over Stanford. In straight sets. Trying to use the option, and Haley Hamlet does successfully. A lefty on the left side, and she's able to redirect this ball. That's not an easy ball to clear the net coming across your body like that. You know, Holly, we've talked about how a lot of pairs have one that's a blocker, one that's a defender. Usually, too, what we haven't mentioned is they usually play on one side of the court, either the left side or the right side. Correct. And, and usually left-handed players play on the right side because it's easier for an option ball on two. But we're seeing some left-handed players that like playing on the left. And the angles that come as a left-handed player on the left side of the court are tough to read. USC has a lefty two on their side. Nicole Norris right there, number 42 in black. She's the lefty. Playing to 21, you have to win by two. Hamlet coming in. That time USC trying Hamlet. They started on McTavish, but the serve is too easy from this USC pair. I know they're up, but I feel like you need to set up your defense with a tough serve. Bringing in the twos now on the right side of your screen. Lena Camille and Kate Privet facing the Madisons, Madison Shields and Madison White. Camille with a bump set up to Privet. And it's long, point, women of Troy. Missed opportunity for TCU at the twos. Here comes the serve for TCU at the threes. Nicole just pounds it for USC. And up comes a big swing from Madison Shields. Madison Shields, good dig and strong, aggressive open net kill there for USC. To the back corner, McTavish. And at the twos, Camille option ball on two to the corner. TCU getting close to taking the set at the twos, but USC close to taking the set at the threes. 18-14 now for the threes in favor of USC. And keep an eye on the threes. The Norse Twins have clinched the last two duels for USC. In comes McTavish, and she is blocked by Nicole. And that time, Nicole Norris, good eye work to identify that Sutton McTavish wants to hit this ball. Make sure she's disciplined on her press. 
textbook block from Nicole Norris, number 42 for USC. Sutton McTavish finding some sand across that court. That time, good identification of the defense, cutting it away from the defender. So Haley Hamlet back now taking control for TCU. Trying to bomb a tough serve, but instead goes long, and it'll be set point USC. Hamlet's got an aggressive serve, one of her best assets on the volleyball court, but missing that and went short. Nobody on, and an attacking error for Sutton McTavish. That is going to give USC the set point. 21-15, the opening frame going to the Trojans at the threes. You have to win on three courts in order to win the duel, win the match, that is. So we'll wait while the threes wait for their second set. We go back to the twos. Privet and Camille need two points here. There's one of them, set point TCU. Camille is long at the net, number 27, standing at the net, the blocker for TCU, and she has a strong defender behind her in Kate Privet, number 25. And Camille, the conference freshman of the year out of the Ukraine. Right over that block, second set point coming for TCU. And that time, USC in system able to clear the big block. Kate Privet. Opening set to TCU at the twos. Kate Privet attacks out of the middle of the court and goes up to swing and terminate for TCU. Daniela Alvarez and Tanya Moreno have set point. Set point for USC at the fours. We play on at the fours, taking a look at the ones now, left side of your screen. Tanya Moreno looking for that corner, Maple. Craft. Moreno pokes it and TCU takes set one at the ones. Beautiful deep poke to the corner by Moreno of TCU to win that first set. And then a big swing by Ashlyn Rasnick pulled for USC to win the first set here. Fours go to USC. Same at the threes, but at the twos, it was TCU. We'll take a look at the scoring here. TCU. Winning the first set at the ones and the twos. USC winning the first set at the threes and the fours. So our only court in action right now, that fives group. They're in a timeout right now, tied up. Well, at 2019, actually, Bakos and Walker up by a point, set point for USC. Very competitive opening set on all these courts. And these have been important pairs for both programs. Bakos and Walker scored a point earlier, and then Rochelle Scott and her partner Brockett have clinched for TCU, I think twice already yes. in this duel, they've clinched, in this championship. They've clinched both duels for TCU here at NCAAs this week. Most recently against Stanford earlier today. So you see them both regrouping. Dane Blanton working with the USC pair at the fives. And Olivia Bacos, number five in black. And Gabby Walker, the freshman, number 31. It is set point USC. Rocket. Tied at 20. Big time response right there. Gabby Walker was blocking that angle, but Brockett goes over. Attacking out of the middle. That ball looks a little bit tight, but able to sneak it past the block. 
Tied up at 20, you have to win by two. Swing wide, set point, TCU. Rochelle Scott on the back line, number 24 for TCU. She went to Maricosta High School in Manhattan Beach, as did Olivia Bakos on the other side of the net. They know each other extremely well. Scott serving for the set. Bakos will get the swing, tied at 21. That time, Bakos keeps it high and deep, making it harder to block. Look at Walker push her partner up to the net, and she doesn't try and hit it straight down, hits it deep into the court, which makes it tough for Scott to stop. Each team has had a set point on this court. Brockett. Set point TCU for the second time. Two balls in a row. Brock, Brockett has gone poke over the angle block. So if you're USC, you want to respond and adjust your defense to pick that up. Bakos, nobody on. She goes at the pulling blocker, Rochelle Scott. Nobody on for Scott. Walker. Taking the option is TCU's Rochelle Scott. Transition point opportunities missed if you don't set to the net and stay aggressive on your swing, and TCU takes care of it. They do on the second set point. Horn Frogs take the opening set 23-21 at the fives. Great hand contact by Rochelle Scott on this tight dig to clear the block and redirect it. So TCU has taken set one at three courts. Drama's building on the beach. Winner of this duel is moving on to the national championship duel to face UCLA. UCLA victorious over Florida State to advance earlier today, and now USC and TCU. Holly, look at the Horn Frogs go. They have won the first set at three spots. Yeah, incredible start. I mean, TCU knew they had to come out aggressive against USC, who's been here before. This is a big time match in the semifinals. So we'll go to the twos now. Madison Shields, Madison White for USC, facing Lena Camille of TCU and Kate Privet. We told you about Lena Camille's story, the freshman out of the Ukraine, hasn't been home in over a year to see her family. The good news is her family is safe, and she has found a family for now with the TCU Beach Volleyball Program. And it's great to be surrounded by a group of people who love you and support you when you're so far from home. Service error, and that'll be a point for TCU. And Lena Camille, number 27 in that purple and white jersey. The conference freshman of the year. It was a challenge for her coming over for many reasons, but one of those, she had played with the same partner for a very long time in the Ukraine. So it was interesting to work on a new partnership, but she's found a good spot with Kate Privet, who's very experienced. Stopped by Madison White at the net. Maddie White, number 10 for USC. She is long, learning to become a full-time blocker. And Dane Blanton can't say enough good things about her athleticism. He just thinks she is going to be elite. Look how high she is over the net, cutting off that angle of privet. You know, Madison White told us blocking obviously has been a focus for her, and Dane Blanton has helped her a lot. But she said, I'm not afraid to stay up and challenge the opponent now. And she says, I feel like I'm a six-foot blocker. She's 5'10". She says, I have not grown. But, but she I, plays tall. Yes. And that's a big thing when you've got those long arms. And she jumps well. So she's much bigger than a lot of six-foot blockers in terms of how high she is over the net for USC. And her partner, Madison Shields, has recognized that too, telling us she's an amazing athlete. And by the way, she's only a freshman. There she is again, Maddie White, with a big kill on the left side. She was a Pac-12 all-freshman team. 
and a top flight award winner with Maddie Shields. At the three spot, they've been moved up to the twos, but good power from Maddie White. Camille, how about that power? Camille has been impressive. What an athlete. Maddie, Madison Shields was there for USC and can't come up with it. Watch her get on top of this ball, accelerate that arm through the ball. Maddie White needs to cover that ball, came back really slow, especially when you've got a blocker like Camille, you have to be ready to play those balls. Going to 21 again here in the second set. Hand set from White to Shields. Keep Privet, got it in. Good transition ball by TCU and Madison Shields for USC is feeling the pressure of Camille at the net and hitting that ball towards the defender Privet. For USC, the adjustments they can make are running offense out of the middle, run that back set, open things up on both sides of the blocker so you don't feel the pressure of trying to go over her. And you see that's the same play, maybe a little bit more inside, but Maddie White's a great setter, run a back set, pass it up to the net, Maddie White can attack on two. There's a lot of different ways to attack that big block. Instead though, the run continues for this TCU duo. There's a nice set from Maddie White, but too much. No so adjustments made, and it's not working for USC. They'll try to regroup here. TCU feeling good at the twos. They're up 13 to 8 at the technical timeout. UCLA is into the championship duel. Now it's time to refuel a bit. Stein Metzger, some of his teammates watching to see who will be their opponent when they play for a national title. UCLA won the championship in 2018 and 2019. Here are the scores. TCU won the first set on three courts, and it's close on several of these courts here in the second set. Remember, the first team to win the match at three courts wins the duel and advances to the championship. We go back to the fives, Olivia Bacos, Gabby Walker for USC, Haley Brockett and Rochelle Scott for TCU. TCU won the first set in extra points, 23-21. Bacos swinging with nobody on. Andrea's been watching this court for us. How's it been going down there? Yeah, Courtney, it's been great. After TCU won the first set, Coach Gutierrez reminded them to keep the same momentum, and he really wanted them to put more pace on their swing. He said that their serves were also too easy. He said, are they serving easy to you? She's a freshman. She's going for it. We need to go for it, too. Yeah, Holly's talks numerous times about how important it is to serve tough. TCU handles that pass, and then Rochelle Scott so good at that option ball over on two pokey. So Rochelle Scott back to serve this duo, Brockett and Scott, an AVCA Top Flight Award winner. These two have been with Hector Gutierrez from the start of building this TCU program. Walker, they want a touch, they will not get it. Not sure, but it looked like it hit the top of the tape and went wide. about Olivia Bacos, USC. She's going right down the seam. Rochelle Scott blocking line, Brockett in the angle, and she goes down the middle. This USC pair trying to force a third set. 
Parker serves towards Brockett, and now Brockett gets the swing. Point TCU. TCU in system, high line, and will switch sides and sit down up 11-10 for USC. A technical timeout there at the fives. We'll zoom in on the threes. McTavish and Hamlet responding after dropping the first set 21-15 to the Norse Twins. In comes Audrey. Haley Hamlet trying to block it, but she tools it. Aggressive swing by Audrey Norse. TCU tooled on that block. Working with the Norse twins, Holly, what's, what's it like? What is their partnership like? Well, it's intense. Both of them want to be great, but they've learned to communicate better with one another. Not so be hard, be so hard on one another. I feel like sometimes with them playing with one and different partners, they can be kinder, right? And with your sister, you're a little bit tougher on her. 89 career wins for the Norris Twins. They're in their senior season. They're not done because their freshman year was 2020, so they've got that COVID year. Nice up by Hamlet. She gets back up in time to attack. Great read by Hamlet and Norris a little bit tentative on that shot. TCU setting her up for that line, and then Hamlet crushes it for the transition point. TCU needs two points to even up the match at the threes. Timeout taken. Now the twos we go. Privet and Camille getting closer to putting the first point on the board in favor of TCU. Madison White setting up shields. White trying to get the block, not that time. But TCU putting all sorts of pressure on Madison Shields. Madison Shields has not made any adjustments. I'd love to see her either push Maddie White up to hit on two or switch to the left side and give TCU a different look. That one does get past the block off the hand of Madison Shields. Good cut shot there. TCU has never been to the championship duel. USC trying to defend back-to-back -back titles. The hustle for Madison White keeps that ball in play. Camille is going to handset Privet. Poked over. White pokes back. Drops in back and forth, but in favor of USC. How about Maddie White pulls off the net? I mean, this is a dig spike, right? She spikes it back to open court to end that long rally for the USC point. USC needed that. We saw some aggressive plays on there. A lot of option used in that last rally. Timeout called. Back to the threes we go. TCU trying to even it up, force the third set. Tied up at 19, thanks to a top serve from Nicole Norse. Exactly, Nicole Norse has the ability to attack from the service line, especially from the left side of the court, coming off her left hand. Harder to read. McTavish. Nicole with a lefty swing, and it's match point USC. USC keeping the ball on Sutton McTavish, blocking her line and digging her angle, and it's working out. Nicole Norse digs it, and then a transition down the middle. Tied up at 20. Let's check in with Drea. It's been so much fun listening to these two twins talk to each other. You talked about being them being hard on each other, but they've been very encouraging. And I also noticed they have 8 and 24 on their visors. I was told by the staff that they're big Kobe Bryant fans. That's true. I'm glad you noticed that. I almost said something earlier, but yes, they both love Kobe Bryant. And Nicole Norse was a basketball player, Audrey Norse a soccer player. 
using their inner Mamba mentality right here. Match point number two for USC. Sutton McTavish identifies the defense. Two back-to-back -back side outs for TCU number six. Gustavo Hocha walking with his pair, giving them some information. No points on the board yet in the duel. The first team to win on three courts advances to the national championship. Powerful swing from Nicole. I can't tell what TCU's doing defensively. Him that might have been cheating towards the line. Third match point, USC. McTavish had to chase it to poke it. It's in, tied at 22. Great response, and Sutton McTavish is playing Hawaiian style, which means you switch straight across. So on one side, she's playing right side. On the other side, she's playing left side. Audrey on the attack. McTavish, where will she go? She'll swipe it across the net, and TCU has its first set point. Strong serve, and that sets up her D. Set McTavish able to score in transition with the dig. Marsh Twins recovering. Nicole does get the swing. And a double contact called on TCU. Didn't come out of Hamlet's hands very well, but TCU just all tied up. They need to let that play go. USC has had three match points at this court. It's match point at the fours for USC as well. Here comes Jenna Johnson, defender pulling. USC, point on the board. The two veterans, the grad students, Jenna Johnson and Asha Raznick Pope, scored the first point. To the ones now, it is match point for TCU. Alvarez and Moreno also match point at the twos for TCU. Privet and Camille. We play on at the twos, looking at the ones now, left side of your screen. Attacking error, TCU, point on the board. Tied up at one point apiece in this duel. And only the second loss for Crafted Maple of USC at the ones. And the previous loss was to the Ferrari Twins of Georgia State. TCU leading the duel two to one. One point away from their first appearance in the national championship duel. To the threes now. USC has had three match points on this court, and now it is set point for McTavish and Hamlet. Blocker was pulling. Audrey Norris going after it, tied at 25. This has been a back and forth battle at the threes. Match point for the fourth time for USC. Lines person watching that back line, calling it in, but the referee, Rebecca Carsonson, is one of the best in the business, very experienced, comes down to check the ball mark. You see the fan in the back pointing that it's in. Benefit of playing in the sand. They do rake the lines whenever they have a timeout, so you can see new ball impressions. So this will be a fourth match point for USC. Audrey Norris serving. 
And it's long, 26s. Bakos and Walker, match point, set point, excuse me, at the fives. And it's out. We'll play a third set at the fives. Right now we focus in on the threes. A fifth match point coming for the Norse Twins. Did you see that angle by Nicole Norse? That was incredible. McTavish coming in, tied at 27. McTavish, good court vision going over the angle block and USC sprinting to dig her line shot and she redirects it the other way for TCU. This will be Nicole Norris swinging, blocker pulls. Wow, way to stick a hand out there, Haley Hamlet. She's made some great plays to save it and keep this rally alive. She pulls again. USC drops it in, a sixth match point. Incredible play, both sides back and forth. I'm glad I started tallying this, Holly. <laughs> You're supposed to play to 21. Audrey goes short. Points later, USC ties up the duel. And it's a mad dash over to the fives. It all comes down to the fives. Norse Twins won six straight NCAA championship matches, and that was their biggest one yet. Tested in every way possible, and they come through winning 29 to 27 in set number two, and now we look towards the fives. Olivia Becos, Gabby Walker facing Haley Brockett and Rochelle Scott in a third set. We played a 15 for a chance to go to the national title. Sent over by Walker. Becos firing right at Brockett. Brockett, nobody on. Both sides pulling, and Gabby Walker going at that pulling player. Defense on both sides of the net, and Gabby Walker is a tough attacker to reach. She hits with a lot of range. This TCU pair, they have been in this situation, clinching the previous two duels here in Gulf Shores over the last day and a half for TCU. Can they do it here and send TCU to its very first appearance in the national championship duel? Brockett. Walker fires away. Nice dig by Haley Brockett. That one does go over. Great hustle to get there by Bakos. Everybody is gassed on that court, including me just watching the hustle. So many digs. Tight ball there. Bako slides under it. One arm stab by Brockett. And this tight ball to the net. Rochelle Scott presses over. TCU Kong block to end that long rally. Get that one hand over and shut it down. We've only played two points in this set. <laughs> Rocket, nobody on. Both blockers pulling almost every swing. This time, Rochelle Scott will stay. Poking over that block of Gabby Walker. Yeah, Brockett's digging a ton of balls, but she's not being aggressive. She's hitting a half-speed ball, and USC keeps digging it back. This time, Rochelle Scott elevates for the poke over the line block. 
both teams need to stay aggressive when they dig a point. Service error, Scott. 2-2. Two, two. Again, going to 15 here in set number three. Winner to the national championship duel. It stayed aggressive. Slight advantage. Rochelle Scott puts her partner right on top of the net. Bakos in the right spot, but the heat too much. USC trying to make its fourth straight championship duel for TCU. It would be their first appearance there. USC has won the last two national titles. That's a nice response from Gabby Walker. And that's what I'm talking about. If she's tight to the net, you cannot stop her. She hits angles that you're not used to seeing. Grew up in Manhattan Beach, always around the sport. Sorry, that's Bakos. Gabby Walker, the freshman, playing with Bakos. Going over the block, Haley Brockett. Brockett mixing it up that time, had a blocker in front of her. Watch her get her feet to this ball and beat it at the net. Beat that block with a little poke shot over. Bakos almost there. She is so quick defensively for USC. Service error. Crockett chasing after it. Walker got a hand on it. She just wanted it, went up, took it away, and threw it down. Gabby Walker patrolling the net, and it looked like TCU kind of got tripped up. They were right on top of one another. Any opportunity you want to take advantage of. So far, it's been one point here, one point there. Nobody's been able to extend or get a couple of points in a row. Brockett goes short with that shot. Nobody up at the net in that short middle roll shot drops. See Hector Gutierrez talking to his pair on the side switch. USC balances the court, but that middle ball too short. Nobody calls it. Very important time when you switch sides. That's the only time that besides a timeout that your coach can, can talk to you. We switch sides every five points in the third set. Going to 15. And both head coaches and their assistants on this court now. Bakos. Nice swing using that block to her advantage. Both teams testing now both players. We saw Walker get a couple serves and now back to Bakos. Olivia Bakos, first time playing here for USC in this tournament, but she has come on the trip to get experience, to know what it feels like to play on this stage. She's got a call on that now. And the response again from TCU, nobody can take advantage and jump ahead. Cut shot there. Rochelle Scott has missed her last two jump serves. I think she'll stay on the ground and keep the ball in play. Sticks her arm out. Nice hustle to get there from Bakos. What an effort by the USC pair. Incredible. Olivia Bakos ran that ball down, putting Gabby Walker in a position to score. Look at her sprint, get under, lift it, and then Gabby Walker told you about her range. 
She hits that deep away from the defender. Gabby Walker told us Olivia Bacos is like a sand crab running around. She moves so quickly in the sand. That one just off her fingertips. Rochelle Scott so good at that poke on to to the deep corner. Bacos almost runs it down. A lot of teams talk to us about mental training. It's important right now. It all comes down to your court. Everybody watching, you've got to stay poised. That one gets the top of the tape and drops for TCU. Excuse me, for USC. USC has won back-to-back -back national championships. They've been in that championship duel the last four tournaments, but TCU has never been there. It will be decided right here at the fives, the first to 15. for Walker to scoop up, and then Gabby Walker unloads. Brockett had poked over the line block of Gabby Walker. The late pull to pick that up pays off, and she is terminal when she digs the ball. I think this might be the first time in this set that either team has had a two-point lead. Bacos. It was touched. A three-point lead now for USC. And TCU calls a timeout. Holly, what are you focusing on in these timeouts right here? Just being present, right? Next play. Don't worry about the score. Next play. How do you score? How do you control what you're doing on your side of the net? Both head coaches talking to their pairs. You see Dane Blanton talking to Olivia Bacos. They're getting double teamed. Yes. <laughs> Gustavo Hocha talking to Gabby Walker, Dane Blanton talking to Olivia Bacos. But these are those big moments dealing with the pressure and being present and, and breathing. These, this is happening for all four athletes right now. There's a reason why pretty much, I think every all 17 teams we talked to talked about the mental training they have done coming into this tournament. They've worked on it all season. So when you get to a moment like this, you have the tools to get through it. Well, the physicality is pretty even across the board. I mean, some teams have a, a slight advantage, but the mental advantage is what's the difference when it counts. There's pressure on both sides. The pressure for USC to get back to the national championship duel and defend the title and try to three-peat. The pressure for TCU to get there for the first time and take that step for the program. Three straight points for USC. And USC mixing up their defense. Gabby Walker's going to make a big move in the angle. But Rochelle Scott, another strike on two for their eighth point. If you're TCU, that's a good response coming out of the timeout, getting the point, getting the serve back on your side, and Rochelle Scott will step back. Raises the tape. Brockett. Off of the dig from Rochelle Scott. A late pull by Rochelle Scott, recognizing the short drop shot, setting her partner up for the kill. And even though she missed some serves earlier, she is still going for it, knowing how important her serve is to set up their defense. It's long. They will switch. USC two-point advantage, a very slow walk and talk with both coaching staffs, Maho Arayana and Hector Gutierrez for TCU, and then Gustavo Hocha and Dane Blanton for USC. It's the first to 15 here in set number three. Winner gets UCLA tomorrow for a title.
Rocket stopped by Walker. Rochelle Scott will try. She gets around. Defensive touch at the net by Walker's block, but TCU recovers with a little cover play. And then Rochelle Scott with the cross-court kill. Rochelle Scott from Manhattan Beach went to Miracosta. So did Olivia Bacos, Manhattan Beach native, Miracosta High School. Playing against each other here. To the back corner! You heard somebody say, get her up there, and Bacos knows if she pushes Gabby Walker tight, she's going to win that battle. TCU. Haley Brockett flying all over the place, but too much from Gabby Walker's arm. USC needs two more points. Look at that dig. Brockett takes off to slide under it in the fight of her life, and then Gabby Walker finishing it off with power for USC. Moment to breathe here for Olivia Bacos. Walker thought about taking it, had to readjust. This will be Rochelle Scott. Slams it home 13-11. Bacos had a dig and got a little bit tentative on her swing and TCU responds. All eyes on this court. Bacos will take the swing. Brackett sends it right back. Caught him off guard. Quick dig over off the deflection. This ball is touched by Rochelle Scott at the net and then Brockett goes over the setter who was Walker running back to get that. Aggressive play from the grad student Haley Brockett. Where will Bacos go across the court? Dual point USC. Big time swing by Olivia Bacos challenging the defender. Walker serving for the duel. Rochelle Scott. It's wide. Three Pete Hope stay alive for the women of Troy. Some new players stepping up for USC. Olivia Bacos, first time in the lineup, and freshman Gabby Walker clinching the duel. A fourth straight appearance in the championship duel. USC has won the last two national titles, and now they will play their rival, UCLA, looking for another title tomorrow. Incredible that they're back in this position. TCU, what a great season. Started out on a 29 dual winning streak. They were the number one team in the nation for most of the season. Hector Gutierrez and his Horn Frog Beach Volleyball team, they are a program continuing to grow and get better year after year. They are, and they made progress. They did much better than last year, and it came down to a couple points on the fives. USC, some called this a rebuilding year for the women of Troy. They said, I don't think so. We're going back to the championship duel, looking for a three-peat. No team has done that.
And it's incredible that they put themselves in a position. They had some bumps along the road. They lost last week to Cal. But what a moment right now for these players scoring for USC and helping get their team back to the final. Olivia Bacos and Gabby Walker, it came down to their court. You see Dane Blanton embracing Gabby. The pressure of that moment, all eyes on you, just incredible. And Bacos and Walker able to come through. Drea has Olivia, Gabby, and Coach Dane Blanton. First of all, congratulations. No team has ever went for a three-peat in the history of this sport. You all are going for a three-peat. It all came down to your court. Duel was tied 2-2. What were you thinking in that final third set? I didn't even know it was tied 2-2. So um, that's really cool. I was just like, I really just trusted Liv in our training and like relied back on that and executed it. It all came down to technique, and that's something we work on every day in practice, the little things, because it's just one play, like that one like play that you have that just changes the tone for the rest of the game. And I think we did a really go good job executing and keeping up with our technique and really nailing it. So I'm really proud of the way we played. Well, Liv, this is your first time playing here on this stage. And Gabby, you're just a freshman, so also your first time. Yeah. How did you all have the trust in each other and your partnership to pull through? I just like really believe like in live we've been practicing and we've had the games come down to our court like multiple times this season and we haven't always pulled it through so this time I was like that's not happening again we're gonna we're gonna win this one coach this was supposed to be a rebuilding year you lost so many pieces from last year's national championship team how did you all make it back to the championship well first of all I'd like to say how proud I am of all of the players especially Gabby and, and Liv just now showing so much grit and so much heart. But we've done that all year on all the courts. And we make up, we're a solid team. One team loses, the other team wins. And it changes. It's not at the same position every time. And everyone has come together. And I think it's been a mission. They know it means something to put on that Trojan jersey. And they upped their game today. It was just awesome to watch. Well, and it definitely means something to put the jersey on across from your rival. You all face UCLA tomorrow in the championship. What will it take to get that win? Oh, it's the same stuff, just like Liv was saying. Fundamentals, folking, a lot of fire, a lot of fire. <laughs> but, um, I mean, how fun. We're playing our rival in the final, so it's going to be awesome. I'm, like I said, so proud of this team. And uh, we have worked an entire season for this day, like everybody else, and we're ready to seize it. Can we see the fire one more time? What was that? Get it, coach. Congratulations again. Thank Great you job. So much.